Well, good evening, good people. Mark Holmes here, and as always, I want to say thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report. Without you guys, as well as you ladies, you know that this literally does not work. I hope everybody's having a great day today. It is Thirsty Thursday. The Dallas Cowboys were back on the field again today. Of course, not working in pads except for helmets with the pads on them. You know, those things are, it, it's its crazy to, to look at those. Those are totally different. And you have to wonder, with the head trauma that players are having, are we beginning to see the beginning of actually seeing these soft shell helmets in the future for the NFL players that they literally will be wearing helmets like this? It's not far fetched, but be that as it may, uh, one thing I want to touch on today is the fact that Micah Parsons, okay, the rookie sensation last year, the unanimous rookie of the year is seeming to be primed for an even bigger year. Mike McCarthy said he's primed for a big second-year jump. Wow. If Mike McCarthy is right about that, woo-wee. I want to uh, – let, let's, let's go to the tape here a little bit here. These are some sights and sounds from today's practice and seeing Michael Parsons. Let me turn down. This is our guy here. This is our guy, Micah Parsons, here. And uh, you got to love him. You, you got you got to love the intensity. Again, the, the helmets with the extra pads on. It's kind of crazy seeing that. But, but look, watch him here in the, the – oh, look at that. Boom. Hands. Okay. Let, let's, let's, let's hit the jugs again. Let's hit the jugs again. Uh oh. Tip, 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 tip. Got it. Bring it in. All right. Him rushing here against Terrence Steele. Look at that. Boom. If that had been live in pads, Dak Prescott would have been been smeared. And here we have on the uh, on on the blocking sled. Here we go. Look, look. Still again. Those shields. Look at that. Boom. Got all of our linebackers. Here's what's cool is you're seeing Micah all over the field. You know, like I was saying before, that Micah needs to be, um, he really needs to be like Bo Jackson. Bo Jackson was known for Bo knows. Bo was literally everywhere on the field doing everything, so to speak. On his ads, he literally was Bo knows. And that's getting to be Micah Parsons, um, right now is Micah Parsons literally is everywhere. But back to what Mike McCarthy was saying about him. Um, obviously, year two, people will look at him and they'll have to game plan against it, which is the truth. Because now you have to wonder, you know, where is Micah Parsons going to be? And this would be a great thing. And, and I touched on this, that if Sam Williams can come out of the box and be at least as good as Randy Gregory with less sacks, I mean, excuse me, less uh, penalties, Micah Parsons can literally be your wild card, and you can move him all over the place where you literally get the quarterback coming to the line of scrimmage, and he is looking, where is Micah Parsons? And as he's looking for Micah Parsons, all of a sudden you forget about Sam Williams. You forget about Demarcus Lawrence. You forget about Tristan Hill, or if he's still on the team. You forget about Navelle Gallimore. You forget about Osa. You forget about um, Carlos Watkins. And there's so many other guys that will feed because of Micah Parsons. But back to Mike McCarthy. For the whole year to implement the schemes around that, we're going to give him the opportunities he needs, says McCarthy. He definitely put himself in a position to take that big second-year leap. Um. The thing that's also interesting is Micah Parsons has uh, definitely taken off some more weight, too. He's a little bit thinner, um, lighter, quicker. Um, other things that Mike McCarthy was saying about that, um, statistically, some of the things that he'll do won't show up in the statistics. And that's the part I was kind of trying to say there. When you see Micah Parsons and you've got people now that are double teaming him and being concerned about stopping him, that means everybody eats. If you don't know 
where he's coming from or if he ends up being there. And this is where it's conceivable that he doesn't have the 13 sacks that he had last year. But you see the defense elevate themselves because of the play that he has. So, you know, his goal is 15 sacks, but, you know, the the record of 23 he, he kind of keeps it in the back of his mind, too. I mean, if you get to 15, you do start thinking about 23. It's only eight more. I know that sounds crazy, but, you know, we do play Carson Wentz twice. We do play Carson Wentz twice. So the plans will definitely be to put Micah Parsons in positions to really and truly make an impact. And before I get out of here, because, you know, there's so many, so much stuff that's going on. I, I can't wait to get to Oxnard um, next week and bring you guys um, content and stuff from Oxnard. But, you know, it's so funny how I get trolled by people. And this is where, where one of my kids, my, my son, Philly 500, he went through and he took clips of me um, talking about Jordan Davis. And Jordan Davis is going to, I mean, you know, potentially could be a great, great player. Here's the funny thing. So Philly trolled me and all, and you can watch the whole video and things. You know, you can see my son that swears he looks like Denzel Washington. And so you know that he's got some real issues with he thinks that he looks like Denzel Washington. But be that as it may, when you start talking about the guy that you moved up in the draft to get, I don't understand how you go through and start talking about bust. Listen to what my man says. I believe he just said it. Yeah, I said it. I cannot blame Howie Roseman, the Eagles front office. I can't blame any of them. If Jordan Davis turns out to be a bust, I can't blame them. I can't hold them at fault because when you get a guy six foot six and whatever, three hundred forty pounds, mm -hmm. runs a four seven, okay. When you get a guy with his ability and his ceiling, and let's face it, the draft is a crapshoot, right? How many first round picks pan out? You could hear all these people <laughs> talking about. I have all the knowledge. A lot more for I the Cowboys. About the draft, I know that about the draft. I know that. Nah, you don't know shit. <laughs> You, just no, you. you don't know okay? shit. Most of the time, teams get first-round picks wrong. And if you're the, the Eagles. I get it wrong all the time, too. <laughs> I ain't better than anybody else. I'm worse. Okay? But Jordan Davis is a guy that you look at and you say, my God, he has all the athletic ability in the world, all the size, all the all that you could ask for, he has. And when you're looking at first-round picks, you're trying to project what guy you think can fit and what he could be ceiling-wise. And let me say this for Eagle fans. The, I've been watching the Eagles since like 82, 83, okay? My earliest memory of the Eagles mm -hmm. is Dick Vermeil retiring and starting and crying in a press conference. That's when I became an Eagle fan to a diehard, emotionally attached Eagle fan, all right. It, it 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 changed the levels. Watching this man cry in a press conference, I felt bad for him, and I fell in love with the team even more than I already liked it because my whole family's an Eagle fan. Okay, so I've been watching a long time. Uh -huh. Jerome Brown is the greatest defensive tackle I've ever seen play for the Philadelphia Eagles. And matter of fact, he if he played out his whole career. Mm -hmm. He would he would have gone down as one of, if not the best defensive tackle to ever play. He was on that kind of trajectory. Okay, he was insane. It's hard to argue. There that. hasn't been anybody close to him. Fletcher Cox, great player, Hall of Fame player, couldn't Jordan hold his jock strap. Level. Okay, Jordan Davis, from a physical standpoint, from an athletic ability mm -hmm. standpoint, from a ceiling, from potential. He has the ability to be that, okay? Now, whether he can put it all together, whether he can go out there and live up to his abilities, yet to be seen. But he's, he's a freak of nature, and you can't blame the Eagles for drafting this guy, okay? Okay, I'm just, just kind of putting it out there. 
it, you know, I, I always say don't put out into the universe or you put out in the universe what you want to happen. And, and knock on wood, I wouldn't be talking about if he's a bust and you just start a training camp. But, you know, I can understand why Philly 500 would be like that because, you know, when they start looking at guys like Rhaegar and um, like, uh, you know, some of the other players that they've gotten in the first round that haven't exactly panned out the way they wanted, you know, and kind of the misses that they've had, you know, they could have had DK Metcalf, you know, they could have had um, CeeDee Lamb had they moved up and stuff and so on. But but I'm happy that Philly is happy and ecstatic about his guy. i just remind you of one thing when it comes to drafting first-round players and Philly 500. I fire Howie. Fucking fire him. Mom! What an idiot! What an idiot! Dallas has Amari Cooper and Gallup, but we don't need a receiver! Are you kidding me? I don't want Justin Jefferson, he's ass! He's stupid! I fire his ass! I fire his ass. I mean, how he's got to be stupid. What are you doing? You just let Dallas take him. <laughs>